I have to ask, when you think about this, are you, why are you already smirking? What's happening right now? <laughs> Hold on, I didn't ask a question. Just tell me why you're smirking. Go ahead, what is your reaction? Oh, to the student loan debacle? Oh, is, it, oh, is, it, is it a debacle? The dis- there you go. The co- I mean, well, where do I start? It's inflationary, it's illegal, it's immoral, it's irrational, it's idiotic, it's inequitable, and those are just the things that start with the letter I. I mean, I could go on to other letters in the alphabet. I think that what he did today is a direct reaction to the fact that young Democrats, in all the polling we've seen, hate Joe Biden. They're done with Joe Biden, and he's sending them all a $10,000 check in an effort to buy their support. Even Nancy Pelosi, who I'm not often aligned with, as you know, stated on the record unequivocally that this is illegal. The President of the United States does not have the authority to do this. And the final question is, there is no world where you would consider this to be fair. What makes this debt more righteous than the small plumber who took out a loan to buy a new van, or the person who got a mortgage, or the person who got a loan to buy a car so they could drive themselves back and forth to work? Or what makes it fair to the person who paid off their debts, to the parent who just wrote the last check for their son or daughter to go to college? There's no world in which this isn't a cynical political ploy by an elderly president trying to buy the votes of the youngest people of his party. I want to tell you, Maria Cardona literally moved her phone away from her just now as you were talking. I hope talking. she was recording I don't know it. if you were going to throw it. Were you like, let me just hold on something, hold on Warm a second? Up. Up. You, what, what is your reaction, You know, Maria? shocker that a Republican would be against something that a Democratic president is doing that is wildly popular at a time when Democrats are gaining momentum going into the midterm election, showing that it is yet another promise kept by this president. And by the way, it was a promise that he made to voters, to constituents, not just young people, but yes, young people during the campaign. He didn't just come up with this. And by the way, it's rich that Republicans are talking about fairness when they have passed billions and billions of dollars in corporate tax cuts, in corporate socialism, and now they're talking about fairness? Give me an effing break. Well, I gotta say, I mean, I wanna hear from you too, because you think about that, and you know, good good censorship, I like that. Because he, he had the letter I, you had the letter cable, F, you know, it was cable, you know, I don't know. I don't know if we're there yet, we're not there yet. But on the point, yeah. I mean, we I do have we do have <laughs> other forgiveness programs, right? I mean, sure. it's not it's not yeah. it's, it's not totally novel in the idea of this debt, as Scott mentioned, being so righteous. There are certainly generations who are going to benefit from some laws that the last will not, and the future did not, right. and the past one. So, why? What, where do you come out on this? So, I agree with one point that you made, Maria, and one point that you made, Scott. <laughs> I, That's uh, very r- diplomatic. R- r- yeah, that was very <laughs> diplomatic. Look, you're right. This kind of debt is not more righteous than a small business loan. One difference, though, small business loan, other kinds of personal debt, you can discharge in bankruptcy. Right now, you can't discharge Mm -hmm. this in bankruptcy. Treasury Secretary Summers the other day proposed doing that instead of this, but it still stands there right now. This is debt that people are really dragging along. The other thing about this is that when you're talking about policy, Scott, you've got to remember that every, just as Laura said, every sort of giveaway, if you will, is a giveaway to somebody. President Trump gave money to farmers who voted for him to do a trade war with China, and then he subsidized the trade war by by subsidizing their products that China was putting tariffs on. President Trump did the 2017 tax cut, Mm -hmm. and that was a sort of a giveaway in a lot of people's eyes to wealthier Americans. Who's going to think it is? Well, before I, well, hold on, before before I get there, no, excuse me, before I get there, though, I want to point out this, and this this will infuse the conversation, because we're talking about equity and fairness. We know part of the Biden administration has been about intergenerational wealth and fairness, particularly in communities of color, and I want to take a pause, and we, we mentioned this student debt plan, but I want to look at who it will actually impact. I mean, look at the screen there. Biden says it's going to help ease the pain in communities who most are most hampered by debt, racial minorities, but the NAACP, maybe to a different point, says that it's not enough. And they say, quote, canceling just $10,000 of debt is like pouring a bucket of ice water on a forest fire. It hardly achieves anything, only making a mere dent in the problem. And we know the problem is vast. You've got federal student loan debt now standing in the U.S. at around one6 trillion dollars. It was a model from the Urban Institute that showed that 62% of the canceled student loan dollars would go to white borrowers versus the 25% that would go toward black borrowers, 8% for Hispanic borrowers. Now look a little closer and it's black women, I'm pointing at myself, who hold the majority of student debt. 
shouldn't come as a surprise considering messages, well, like this. A college man. I got me a college man. Ma, this letter just means I got accepted. It doesn't mean we can afford it. Nonsense. It means you're smart, you work for it, and you deserve it. Honey, it's your chance. And we're gonna get you on that bus somehow. You were the first in this family to uh, get into college. I'm so proud of you. I can't go, can I? I just can't afford to send you. I remember ads like that when they were playing, and they would play all the time and be really fermented in the minds of so many people. And yet we see Americans, people of color, who must spend way more for a chance at the American dream. The Brookings analysis showed that black college graduates owe $7,400 more just on average than their white peers. And take into account differences in interest accrual and graduate school borrowing, well, then you're talking about black graduates ending up holding nearly $53,000 in student loan debt after graduating. It's almost twice as much as their white counterparts. Now, I bring that up in the panel and have that moment because you're talking about fairness, right? And we know that at times we compartmentalize when equity ought to be doled out. But equality is not like pie, right? You don't get less because I get a piece. Right. But it's a part of the conversation. How do you? How does that change? Does it change or influence you at all? Oh, I, I, I think some of these things are extremely fair, and I think every time you peel a layer back, like you just did on the difference between white borrowers and African American borrowers, you see how little thought was put into this. But the part of Joe Biden's political base that he is most worried about are these young, white, privileged, liberal, gender studies majors who are so unhappy with him. None of them want to support this guy for president again. That's who he's writing a check to today. It is simply trying to buy off the people who he can't get today in the current polling and taking for granted everybody you just mentioned. And I can't believe that I'm the only person at this table who, is more bother who isn't more bothered by the fact that this is totally illegal. There is no authority for the president to do this at all. And Chuck Schumer, the Senate Democrat leader today, said, with the flick of a pen, Joe Biden has dot dot. Why even have a Congress? Where is the co-equal or more important branch of government in all this? I am Because stunned. for so long, Congress, Republicans specifically, has said no on any kind of policy that would give any kind of equity to the American people, especially those who need it the most. And I think it's insulting, Scott, that you say that this policy will not help black students will not help Latino students. I didn't. I know she said it. I didn't say it. She no, laid it out. I didn't say it. I read you, you the facts. You just give a very compelling report. I read no, but, but report. Yeah. No, what you happened. said that this would only help white students that are studying gender studies, whatever that means. I don't know. It sounds insulting because it is people, insulting. People I'm insulted. In my, people in my, <laughs> my gender studies, people in I, my I, community, I, people I, in Laura's community, People in many communities, including white people, will benefit from this. That's why it is equitable. Laura, is it the be-all and end-all? No, but it will be a, a step in the right direction. We need to reform the way that we send our students to school. When my parents brought us to this country, it was because we had this, this dream of being able to do anything you wanted if you studied hard, if you played by the rules, and my parents were able to send us to college because of the opportunities in this country. Ooh, yeah. I want everyone to have that, and apparently Republicans don't. Well, go ahead. I was okay. just going to quickly say, I didn't get to say where I agreed with Maria, which was that, yes, this was not a surprise. Biden and other Democrats campaigned on yes. this. Yes. There will be court challenges, yeah. and th it may go down in court in the same way that some of the things that President Obama executive ordered, like, like the DAPA program, did go down at the Supreme Court level. So I, I, I don't think you're wrong there. But this was something that Democrats campaigned on. It was not a secret. And Biden is bringing it out at the time and, and when he's on a little bit of a hot promise, And it is a promise I, kept. I, I, well, I, I agree about this, about that he campaigned on it. A, yeah. that's not, a, you know, I guess I could campaign on all sorts of illegal things and that doesn't make it right. But B, if he thought this was legal and proper, he would have done it on day one. Instead, we're doing it 11 weeks before an election. There's nothing illegal or proper or good policy about it. It's pure politics. Well, we're going to come back to this point, but just suffice to say, one of the reasons they have said they did this in fact, is because of the impact that COVID-19 has had on people's ability to pay, hence yeah. the delay of the actual payments and beyond. That might explain part of the reason why.